Hello everybody, welcome to Review A Day, episode number 66 for Friday, October the 17th, 2008. Hello everybody, welcome to Review A Day, the daily video blog where I review a movie seven days a week. My name is Leland Brungart and thank you very much for joining me. And the film I'm going to be reviewing today is The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. This movie is directed by Julian Schnabel. Um, actually, an American director. This film is all in French. Um, I believe the screenplay was originally written in English, but they uh, changed it to be in French because the book it is based on is in French. Um, this story, this film, tells the true story of um, L editor Jean Dominique Bobby, and he had a stroke and he was completely paralyzed except for his left eye, I believe, one of his eyes. And he learned to communicate um, by blinking, and this, the film is told from his perspective, and it's all about him trying to cope with this horrific thing that has happened to him, and it's told using flashbacks that deals with his father, um, with the day it happened, with his family, um, the woman he left his, his wife for, or the mother of his children. Uh, it, it's, it's incredibly... Um, surreal at times. It goes into his his dreams and his imagination, and it's all heavily narrated by the main actor of the film. Um, this is a really powerful, emotional film, and I, I think it's one of people's biggest fears. Um, that it's, it's so scary to think that someone is trapped inside their body, that he is completely conscious. He is 100% conscious, but his body will not do it. He can only move his eye and he can blink. Um, and it's so scary and sad to see that get played out on screen. Um, the performances in this film across the board are wonderful. Um, the guy who plays uh, Jean-Dominique, Matthew Almaric, I believe, is, is phenomenal. The transformation from before and, a and after the stroke. The scenes beforehand, he is so confident and successful. And it's such a, a big contrast to this guy who can't even, you know, he, he's drooling. And it's so sad to see that. Um, and it, it's amazing because you don't get to see him act that much during the film. Uh, there's really not that many flashbacks. And when he's in those flashbacks, it's him being really confident. But his narration is superb. It's really wonderful. And uh, I think he does. A, he, I believe he's uh, a lot of this. A lot of the stuff he's reading are passages from the book, and they're they're really gorgeous. Um, it it really is an achievement to take a story about someone trapped in their body and the book that he wrote and translate it to film. Um, I mean, it's a it's a remarkable story that says a lot about the human condition and how people react to something like this. How if a loved one in your family, if this happened to them, how it, how you would react. Um, the f it's an incredibly dark and sad subject, but I don't think the film dwells on that. Um, it, it brings so much beauty out of it in the uh, the passages from the book that I believe he wrote. Um, when we go into uh, his imagination, it's it's incredibly beautiful. The the way um, his loved ones react to this, the people who come to him day after day and read to him, really beautiful. And it says it says some really great things about kind of the human condition. Um, the film looks absolutely incredible. Actually, I was surprised that this was directed by an American director because it felt very French to me in some aspects. Um, I'm sure the fact that it was in French uh, definitely helps with that, but it, it's incredibly beautiful. Um, I love the sequences in his imagination. Um, uh, I like, I especially like the one where he was eating dinner and, and then he realized uh, he's dreaming and he's eating dinner. He's eating all the oysters with his wife and he's in his pajamas. I really liked that one. Um, the sequence of the glaciers collapsing with the narration was gorgeous, and then to see that glacier collapsing um, segment kind of pulled full circle around in the end was great. I really liked that. Um, I also thought the use of the song Beyond the Sea was, was, it was pretty genius. My only gripe about this film is that it, it uses a lot of perspective, and, and I completely understand why, and it's incredibly effective. You feel very trapped. But for probably the first half hour, 45 minutes of this movie, it's all perspective. It's you know, him and the people come and talk to him, and I just, I do not enjoy that kind of, uh, filming. I know there's a British TV series called Peep Show, it was a comedy series that uses all perspective, and I couldn't get into it because of that. Um, it really limits the story and the look, and I mean, I completely understand why, and it makes you feel in his shoes and sympathize with him. 
But as the film progresses, they start, they kind of abandon it more and more and they use it more sparingly. And I think the film really opens up by then. And when this film started opening up and using that less, it really started working a lot better for me and I got much more into the story. Um, I, mean, that, I mean, that's a pretty minor gripe because this film's really great, um, but that, that was really my only problem with it. I give this film a 4 out of 5. It's really emotional. It's touching. Um, I believe there's also an American dub of it, so if you're not into subtitles, the dub is pretty good. I've watched both versions now. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend it. If you guys are liking my reviews, make sure and subscribe. If you have any recommendations on any films you'd like to see me review, leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow.